Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Tanzania got independent. Shortly after Nazi Germany's invasion of Poland, the British government ordered its forces in Tanganyika, now known as Tanzania, to recruit the German males living there into the army. The British government made this move just because it feared that the natives would join forces with the opposition. The Tanganyikans were experienced warriors who fought in the East African campaign in Somalia and Abyssinia against the Italians, in Madagascar against the Vichy French during the Madagascar campaign, and in Burma against the Japanese during the Burma campaign. This gave a boost to Tanganyika's economy as it became a major source of food and its export income greatly increased from the years before the War of the Great Depression. Due to its climate, geography and geopolitics, by 1947, Tanganyika became one of the most significant United Nations trust territories among all that operated under the British authority. By 1957, the region had got so populated that there were 500,000 inhabitants in only 15 towns. Its capital, Dar es Salaam, was the most populated with 128,742 inhabitants. The fast-rising ethnic and economic development in Tanganyika began to intimidate the British. At this time, many Africans were laborers, government servants, business employees, producers of essential cash crops, and subsistence farmers whose standards of living were poor. The Asians and Arabs were the middle class and were wholesale and retail traders. Meanwhile, the white population comprised of missionaries, farm owners, government workers, among other professionals. The British government leveraged the office of the colonial officer, David Gordon Hines, to develop farming cooperatives to enable the conversion of subsistence farming to cash husbandry. The subsistence farmers then sold their produce to Indian traders at low prices. By the early 1950s, there were over 400 national cooperatives that formed union for their areas and developed coffee factories, cotton gineries, and tobacco dryers. A major success that Tanzania had was the Moshi coffee auctions that attracted buyers from various parts of the world. After Tanganyika became a United Nations Trust Territory, the British felt pressured to make more political progress as their principle of gradualism was threatened and eventually abandoned. At this time, the Tanganyikans were already pushing for the country's independence. Urban workers, government employees, peasants, local chiefs and nobles approached the UN about local matters that required immediate action. Africans who were at the core of the Tanganyika government upheld the nationalist movement that was rooted in the African Association AA. The AA later got renamed to the Tanganyika African Association TAA in 1948. In 1954, African nationalism increased through the Tanganyika African National Union TANI a political organization formed by Julius Nyerere. Tanu succeeded the TAA and won the Legislative Council elections in 1958, 1959, and 1960, with Nyerere as chief minister after the 1960 election. Internal self-government eventually began on the 1st of May 1961, and independence came months after, on the 9th of December. 1961. After independence, Tanzania had a close relationship with the United Kingdom, the People's Republic of China, and Germany. In 1979, Tanzania declared a war on Uganda after Soviet-backed Uganda invaded and attempted to annex the northern Tanzanian province of Kagera. Tanzania went further to expel Ugandan forces and enlist the country's population of Ugandan exiles alongside invading Uganda itself. 
On the 11th of April 1979, the Ugandan president, Idi Amin, was forced to leave the capital, Kampala, and immediately ended the Uganda-Tanzania war. The Tanzanian army then took the city, and Amin fled into exile. In October 1985, the independence champion, Nyerere, handed over power to Ali Hassan Mwinyi, but retained control of the ruling party, Chamacha Mapinduzi, CCM, as chairman until 1990, when he handed the responsibility of the party to Mwunyi. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share, and subscribe to our channel.